Welcome back to the channel, you kooks. If you've been following along recently, we upgraded to lithium batteries, but with that upgrade came more upgrades. So I got a few uh, monitoring devices. I got a Bluetooth uh, monitoring device from Renogy. I got a battery shunt with a monitor. It's only 30 bucks. We're gonna check it out, see how well it works. And I'm also gonna be installing this DC to DC battery charger from Renogy to charge my lithium batteries while I drive because I do not have that at the moment and I need something and I need to see how to monitor this system better. So let's see how good all this stuff works. I just picked up some accessories because I had just upgraded to lithium and I had no way to monitor except off the charge controller, uh, the uh, Renogy Rover, but now that's over. So I got this Bluetooth module. It was like 25 bucks on Amazon. So I figured why not give it a try. And I bought this shunt and this battery monitor so I can get a better reading on my new batteries. And last, I got this uh, DC to DC charger, 40 amp. And I'm going to be putting this in a 2007 Sprinter. There's not tons of videos of this unit being installed. So I'm going to get through it. You guys are going to be there with me. All right, so we got the uh, Bluetooth module and the battery shunt with the monitor here. And I'm going to install this first because this is plug and play and this is going to be super easy. I'm excited because this is going to literally take me five minutes. Then I'll move on to the shunt and then we will wire the DC to DC charger. So this is my Renogy Rover charge controller. I've been really enjoying having this. It works great. And I can see or feel the jack plug. It's just right there. Plug that in. This is the BT1. It's a bit older. There is a newer one, but this was like 20 bucks. I couldn't pass it up. Fully charged, pretty much. And yeah, that's the interface. I think there's a newer one that's maybe better, but this is going to help me a lot. And I'll mess with this later, but... I'm connected and I can now monitor all this before I was kind of in the dark because I had this old uh, BT-50 from the olden days or the MT-50 from my EP ever, but that's not going to work anymore. So I'm actually going to try to hopefully get this shunt battery monitor in there today. And I'm working on the shunt and I'm just getting in my cord because it's going in a tight area. It's going to go like underneath here. So before I get everything in place, I'm just getting in all the things that I probably won't be able to put in later. So I'm gonna put this in, and I'm also gonna hook up this shielded wire as well. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna put it in place, and I'll show you where I have it, and then we'll connect it. All right, so this is a great application for the Zero Breeze, but you can see it's 91 degrees in here. It's a very hot day to be working, but the Zero Breeze is providing some nice relief and making it much easier. I'll show you, I just kind of have the door open and the intake and outtake just blowing out the back. So that's that's it, this is the Zero Breeze unit. We've been using it to keep cool this summer. You can check out the link in the description. Okay, so I got the shunt in place. So the B minus, it's gonna come off my main ground terminal here. I already have it loose. And I'm gonna hook it to there. And then the next one's going to go to my common ground, which kind of hooks the whole system up. And that's on a bus bar down here. You can kind of see down there, right there. So I'm going to hook all that up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And then we'll hook up this uh, power cable to the positive bus bar. Okay, I got my shunt all in place. Everything's wired and the monitor is working. It's not programmed yet, but you can see it's definitely working and I'll program this later. I'm not going to go through that with you. That's a whole nother video, but I basically just have it wired from battery to my bus bar. And then I have the B plus go into my um, positive bus bar. So that's how it's all set up. It's pretty simple, straightforward. And now next is the DC to DC charger. Hopefully that'll be easy. Everything's been easy. So it's been a good day. Now let's, we're going to work on this, uh, Renogy 40 amp DC to DC charger. I already have one cord coming in from my old AGM uh, battery isolator. So that's my positive in and I'll hook that up later. I'll also have to run a negative and I'm gonna see what I'm gonna do with that. And then I also have to run my outputs into my batteries here 
So that's gonna be the first order of business. It's been an eventful morning. So I had the uh, Roadrunner, the New Mexico State Bird, actually like come right here by the van. And then it ran down and it got into like an altercation with like a hawk. It was crazy, I got that. And then I popped my hood and I have this like animal nest. I've never had this happen. It's probably not a good thing. I'll show you guys what it looks like. So I just found this and you can see it's been like chewed up. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna set some traps, see if we can catch them. And then I'm gonna get back to this uh, DC to DC charger. All right, so I grabbed a bag and some gloves. And this is kind of intense. I've never seen anything like this. So now anyone in the comments who's had some uh, rat experience, you know, share the love and let me know how I can keep these guys out of here. Got a big one here. Having a hard time reeling it in. It's a big one. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's my ground connection. But yeah, got to get it down any way necessary. Literally fishing this wire through. But yeah, I'm getting it installed. I cut my positive and negative outs. Put some battery terminals on them. I already had a positive running here for my old setup. Now I'm running the negative and then I'm going to get it all hooked together and kind of run through what I did. We are installing the ignition wire. I was going to originally go into a fuse, but I popped open the seat here and I found this guy here and I'm going to put it on that post right there and I got my terminal ring all hooked up. So I'm going to do it right to that and I already checked it It's zero when the car is off and right when I put the keys in the ignition it turned to 12 volts so that one is going to work perfect it's easier to get into and I'm going to do it right now I just started the car and back here I got a yellow light or a green light and you can also hear some noises so it's working I got to get my multimeter and see what's going on but that light wasn't on earlier and now it popped on right when I turned the car on and let's turn the engine off and see if the light goes off. So I'll just leave the camera. That ignition cable actually worked well right there under the seat. If you have a Sprinter, this is a 2007 Sprinter. Okay, now that everything's working and everything's in place, I'm just going to kind of run through the uh, general setup of this uh, DC to DC battery charger. So it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to take a, a negative. These are all four gauge cords. So this negative goes to the negative here on the house battery and the positive goes to the positive here on the house battery. And I have a 20 amp fuse. And if you just heard that started, that just shut off because my battery has reached full. So once the battery's charged full, it sounds like this unit just kind of turns off, that high voltage disconnect. And I also switched my toggle settings. There's these little toggles on here. In the instructions, there's one for uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, which I have. So I set the toggles for my lithium batteries. I run my D plus cord out here, as well as a, a negative and a positive and those run to the battery terminal all right so the d plus i showed you it went under the seat on that little port there and that ended up working out perfect and then i run all my cables down through through down here and i'm getting quite a bit of cable build up because i have so much stuff so these are all my sound system cables i got that 20 amp fuse coming in and i have it just right here hooked up to my battery and then i run that four gauge negative wire and that just hooks up to the negative terminal and that was it it was pretty straightforward setup and it's working i'm stoked it's a good day and i got out here early and finished before it got hot so we're gonna just do a few more things and then we're gonna sign off also you guys remember we had that uh little rat's nest let's see if we uh caught anything nope i can see the trap still set no luck no fresh poops i had a whole pile of poop in that corner 
That's gone.